How many of you here enjoy music? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to go over to the piano and play you a little something, okay? heard a melody or a song just now? Yeah? Okay. A lot of you. Yeah, good, good. Excellent. How many of you heard a color? Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. Take another listen. How about now? No? No? That's okay. Did anyone hear the color green, like me, just now? No? How many of you are completely confused? <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Don't worry, because in the next few minutes, I'm hoping to tell you about how some people in the world actually do hear music as color. We're going to talk about something called synesthesia. And I'm hoping to show you how synesthesia might actually be a superpower. The first time I realized that my perception of the world was a little bit different than everyone else's, I was a college student. I was discussing music with my friends, and we were trying to place the name of a song. I told them, oh, you know, it's that one that's that really deep, rich purple color. I went on to describe that color purple in painstaking detail because it was the only song that I had ever heard that was that particular shade of purple. But midway through my elegant and very poetic description of that color purple, I stopped because my friends were all staring at me as if I were crazy. I asked them what was wrong. And finally, after some additional questioning, one of my friends said, Jess, I think you have synesthesia. Synesthesia. It was a word I had never heard before. My friend explained, it's when the senses are mixed up. You mean most people don't hear color? It was a revelation. I had gone 20 years of my life assuming that everyone saw the world the same way that I saw it. I had never even considered the possibility that C major was yellow, or that the number six was not green, or that the letter S was not orange to everyone else in the world. Everything in my life is color, even emotions, the worst, most incompatible, Negative emotion is steely blue. And the best, most joyful, happiest emotion is orange sparkles. But how many times have we bothered to ask what someone else's perceptual experience is like? How do we know that what you see as red is what I see as red? Well, synesthesia may look like this to many of you. It looks like this to me. Synesthesia is a condition in which the senses are blended. So you might hear color, or smell words, or even taste sounds. It affects about 1% of the population. So if you are in the 99% that doesn't have it, what's it like? Well, we're going to do a little experiment. There are two shapes on the screen above me. One of them is called Kiki. One of them is called Boba. But I'm not going to tell you which one is which. I want you to take a look and study the shapes. Now what I want you to do is focus on the shape on the right side of the screen. And I want you to decide, is this shape called Kiki or is this shape called Boba? Now we're gonna do an experiment. So I want you to close your eyes. And if you think this shape should be called Boba, I want you to raise your hand. Now I want you to open your eyes. Look around. You see all those hands that are raised? What just happened? How do we ascribe meaning to this world? And why is the naming of these shapes not completely arbitrary? Perhaps it has to do with language. The mouth makes a round sound to pronounce the word boba, which goes along with the rounded shape on the right side of the screen. Whereas the mouth makes a harder, more abrupt sound to produce the word kiki, which goes along with the sharp and spiky shape on the left side of the screen. 
This experiment was first performed in 1929 and is known as the Kiki Boba effect. It has since been replicated across many different cultures and across more than 25 distinctive languages, suggesting that the sound itself, as opposed to language, leads to a sort of sound symbolism that takes place in our brains. In other words, there is some sort of connection between the visual shape of kiki that looks sharp in our visual cortex and the sound kiki that sounds sharp in our auditory cortex. And that may very well be how people with synesthesia experience the world on a regular basis. So how do we figure out who has synesthesia? And how do we know that they truly have it and are not just randomly assigning colors to letters in music? Well, two incredible researchers, Richard Saitoic and David Eagleman, revolutionized the field of synesthesia by creating an objective way to study it. We know that synesthesia is involuntary, automatic, and highly consistent. So a validated test of genuineness called the synesthesia battery was developed to help determine who has it and how consistent it is over time. For example, someone with number color synesthesia would assign the color that they associate with a particular number. In this example, they are assigning green to the number three. Now I wanna point two things out here. First, in this example, the number three is not just green, it is a very specific pixel and shade of green for this specific synesthete. And second, the number three is not green for all synesthetes. For example, someone like me, if I was taking this test, the number three would be a very specific pixel of pink. So this test looks at how consistent these answers are at the initial screening, and then how consistent these answers are one year, five years, even 10 years later. And what they have found is that in those with synesthesia, there's not only internal consistency in that initial trial, but there's consistency that spans decades. For people with synesthesia, when colors in the world match their synesthetic associations, the world makes sense. Take the Stroop effect. All of us reading these top two rows right here would say that, yeah, that makes sense. But now, take a look at the bottom row. That feeling that you're getting right now, that incongruency that you are feeling looking at the word purple written in the color green, that is how synesthetes feel every time there is a synesthetic mismatch in their world. So why do some people have synesthesia and others do not? Perhaps some of you are sitting in the audience right now saying, yes, this is my life, you're describing me to a T. And perhaps there are others of you in the audience that, like me, are only now realizing that your perception might be a little bit different than everyone else's. Well, there's a clear neurobiologic basis for synesthesia. It tends to run in families, and neurophysiologic studies have shown that synesthetes are indeed wired differently. Let's take a quick example from the functional MRI literature. Imagine an fMRI is like a light bright. And any time a part of your brain is activated, a little light gets turned on. There's a specific part of the brain in the visual cortex called the V4 color area. And this area, its main job is to process color. So they took individuals with letter color synesthesia, they showed them letters while they were in an fMRI, and indeed, that V4 color area of the brain lit up like a light bright. In those that do not have synesthesia, that same V4 color area did not light up when they were shown the letters. And then they decided to take it one step further. They said, what if we looked at sound color synesthesia? So they played music while people with sound color synesthesia were in the fMRI, and indeed, that same V4 color area of the brain lit up yet again. And they said, well, we're not done yet. Let's take it even one step further. Let's look at sound color synesthesia in a blind individual. And yet again, the V4 color area of the brain lit up. So think about that. A blind individual who cannot perceive color visually is still able to perceive color as a sound because they have sound color synesthesia. 
This is a great example of what we call the alien color effect. Imagine landing on another planet and seeing a brand new color, something your eyes have never seen before. What would you call it? What would you name it? How do you describe something that is, in this example, completely alien to you? So, why is this all important? Other than, well, it's really cool. There are a couple of take home points. From a science perspective, understanding the cross wiring of the brain in synesthetes may actually help us to other understand other conditions, such as autism, Alzheimer's, and schizophrenia. We also know that synesthesia is highly associated with things like photographic memory and perfect pitch. So perhaps we can think of it as a superpower. There are many examples of synesthetes who, because of the way that they perceive the world, have been able to accomplish seemingly impossible tasks. Take Solomon Sharashevsky, a super synesthete that had synesthesia linking all five of his senses, leading to have extraordinary memory, mnemonic, and biomimetic capabilities. Take Daniel Tammet, a savant who has memorized pi to over 22,000 digits. His synesthetic experiences include seeing each individual integer up to the number 10,000 as a unique shape, color, texture, and feel. And he has learned over 10 languages, including becoming conversationally fluent in Icelandic in less than a week. His book, Born on a Blue Day, uh, describes how he actually sees numbers to help him understand human interaction. Take Joy Milne, whose extraordinary super synesthetic sense of smell enabled her to identify Parkinson's disease years before motor symptoms developed. This is an illustration of her synesthetic sense of smell during different stages of the disease. And then on top of that, scientists were actually able to isolate the precise molecule that Milne was smelling. Pretty cool. And then, let us not forget the many, many artists that use synesthesia to enhance their creative expression. Truly, the world is a richer, more exciting place when people with synesthesia are in it. And so, I invite you to consider the borders of the human mind as we know it, and how synesthesia may offer a window into how to move beyond those borders. The superpower here is not just having synesthesia, it's realizing how beautiful our differences in perceiving the world truly are. Because magic like that can lead to a more empathetic, kind, and caring world, and ultimately one that is much more colorful, and in my synesthetic world, one that is filled with infinitely more orange sparkles. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.